Good morning, and welcome to In Touch, a public affairs show dedicated to the health and welfare of Susquehanna Valley residents. At this time on Sunday mornings, we sit down with representatives from various community organizations looking to make a difference in the lives of others. Today, we head to Penn College. Specifically, we're going to the Madigan Library to get a look at a recent exhibit that will be on display through September 8th called Hometown Teams, a museum on Main Street, which is a celebration of local sports with a big focus on Little League Baseball. And we're here with Tracy Amy. Now, you're the director of the Madigan Library. The director of the Madigan Library. Yes, now, you know, I get curious. I have to ask Tracy about the library's namesake, Roger and Peggy Madigan. So, Roger and Peggy Madigan, we opened this library in 2006, and really the funding started with Senator Madigan. So, he was a driving force behind us, opening this really beautiful library on our campus, and I I feel like it it was just a show of faith and um, real understanding of what we do here at Penn College and, and how academically oriented our students really are, and so building this library and his support to get that off the ground was just a huge boost for this campus. And it was just, we really owe it all to him. So, and of course, Peggy was an absolute lover of libraries and books. So it's just wonderful that it's named after them. Well, wonderful. And here we are in Williamsport, speaking with Lance Van Auken. Mm-hmm. And you are the executive director of the World Little League Museum. Correct. Now, tell me a little bit about the connection between the Madigan Library and uh, the World Little League Museum. Well, we've had a great connection with um, the Pennsylvania College of Technology because, our, you know, one of the members of our board of directors is uh, Dr. Davy Jane Gilmore, and um, she's the president of Penn College. And uh, she was our chairman of the board of our board of directors for for five years, um, just went off of that last year. So between the college and the library and, and Little League, um, you know, we consider Penn College one of the jewels of Williamsport and, and Lycoming County. So it was a, a really nice way for us to get together. And, and we've worked on different projects before. When they do the Grand Slam Parade, the kids at the World Series have a picnic here at Penn College. And it's just a nice way to integrate more entities into the Little League World Series. I've been speaking with colleagues just today, and they've been saying, Paul, oh, I went there when I was a kid. The World Series, it's just what we did. It's pretty much a community event every year. It is, and that's what's nice about working with a library on something like this, because it ties in the community, and that's what this exhibit is all about, is uh, the community and, and how it gets behind its sports teams. Tell me the title of the exhibit that's here at the Madigan Library. It's Hometown Teams. It's from the Smithsonian. They have a program called Museums on Main Street. I worked with Jan Ogrechek, and she and I really talked about what it would mean to bring the community in, as well as getting this amazing national exhibit from the Smithsonian. We're the only place in Pennsylvania that has it, so we're really excited to have it. But a big part of that was bringing the community in, because that's what Hometown Teams is about. It's about supporting and rooting for your hometown athletes. So this seems like a really great venue to do that. As Lance said, we have a really nice connection with the Little League, the, whether it's the stadium and the museum. So bringing the community together to create an exhibit about the community was really, <laughs> really appropriate. <laughs> well, the, the World Little League Museum is supporting the World Series since 1947. When did the museum happen after the series started? Uh, the museum opened in 1982, uh, and it basically stayed the way it was and, until just a few years ago, and we completely renovated it. We put about $4.5 million into it. Um, so it's really a you know world-class museum now, 10,000 square feet of, of exhibit space and lots of things to do for people of all ages. Looking at this exhibit, you have coordinated with Tracy and the Madigan Library, Lance, to bring in some hometown items that are really kind of cool, over 70 things. Yeah, the nice thing about this exhibit is is it allows the local community to add their personal touches to it. So throughout it, you'll see not just Little League, but items from high schools and colleges here locally, as well as Special Olympics. So it's a great way to get all those different entities um, involved at the same time. And I, and I have to give most of the credit on our behalf to Jan Ogrichart. She's our Director of Education and Outreach, and our curator, Adam Thompson, who, who did most of the heavy lifting on our part to, to get this done. Well, Tracy, can you show me some of the items? Oh, sure. Lance, let's go. Yeah, <laughs> some of the highlights. Okay. We'll start out here, and this is the, the big display area. We take a walk and to some of the local athletic here. memorabilia that's in glass cases by the entrance of the Madigan Library, which is just off Maynard Street in Williamsport. And there are some items on display from people's names that I recognize. And, of course, we have Alice A. Johnson. He was born in Williamsport. He's now an NBA player. And, of course, he just opened that basketball court here in town, which is Amazing to go by. I love going by it. And we have Kelly Zandy. <laughs> uh, she's also uh, a basketball player. So she's the, the WNBA. And then we have some of the things from the Special Olympics athletes. They just came back from Abu Dhabi 
in May, and they did an amazing job. You had a keynote speaker from the Special Olympics for your opening. We did. We had Aaron Keller, and he won a gold in uh, 10K running. So, And it was just, his speech was so inspirational. He talked about how in the United Emirates, they call them people of determination. And that is really what they showed us. You know, how much work and dedication, just like every other athlete, they're athletes. We support them, we root for them, they're our community. So we have gold medals from, actually, Delina Rodriguez's gold medal okay. from lifting is with her now because she's going to meet President Trump this week. That's right, how exciting. <laughs> um, but then we've got from the volleyball team as well, this is their jersey, and these are the specially made shoes that were given to all the athletes. They had to go through a special health program. That's what the, the Abu Dhabi Special Olympics Committee decided to do. They wanted each of the athletes to go through a health fitness program, and if they did, they got these special shoes. And of course, the volleyball team won gold, too. <laughs> that is so exciting. And yeah. for, for a group of kids and young adults that are just bursting to show what they can do, how awesome. Yes, it was really, and it was so inspirational to see them here. We really, you know, we at that day, we also had a fundraising event in our lawn for the Special Olympics Pennsylvania. What a fantastic organization to support. And that's our community coming together. That's how this is all about. Absolutely. <laughs> Lance, did you grow up in this area? I did not. I, I grew up in Seminole, Florida. I moved up here about 25 years ago. Have you always been a baseball fan? Always. My older brothers always, they played before me, played Little League, and then I went through Little League. I got the chance to umpire in the Little League World Series. Um, you know, later as an adult, I coached my son through all his, his years in in How many pins do you have? Uh, you know, not, as, not as many as I used to. I gave a lot of them away. But the museum itself has tens of thousands, you can imagine. Are they on display here, Tracy, any of those pins? None of the pins are, okay. because obviously we have the World of the League Museum, which is our oh, Is that where you put that? Yeah, oh. yeah we, have no, we don't have all of them on display because, it, you know, we only have 10,000 square feet of space. More. <laughs> so, um, yeah, a, a small a smattering of them is on display, and that's a huge thing every year at the World Series, and we just keep getting more and more. We encourage, I guess, folks to come to the Madigan Library to see this great exhibit yeah. and then also head to the museum, which yeah. is just on Route 15. Yeah, it's a five-minute trip down the road. And they, these are really companion pieces. So to come here and then go to, go to the World of Little League Museum or vice versa, you're really going to get a whole view of what Little League means to the community. And really, we say it all the time, we're inviting the world into the community. And now we're showing off a little bit of what our community does as well. So I think it's a really nice tie-in. We're in the lobby with these historic local items. Yep. And then you move through to the regular yep. area and we can see other things. Yes, let's take a look over here. Real quick, because this is another one of our local, our local heroes from Dave Bresnahan, and of course he was a baseball player here. Um, there's a really interesting story. I'm not sure if you're familiar with it, Liz. Um, th it was when the Williamsport Bills played here, and they were a, a double A team. Not right now, the Crosscutters are a short season single A team. And Dave was a catcher, and he would admit he was uh, kind of on his way out of baseball instead of his way up. Late in the season, he was a catcher. And he cooked up this plan to, actually over a couple of days, waiting for the right moment, when there was a runner on third base, and he had taken a potato and carved a potato to look like a baseball, and he hit it, you know. Waited for that moment when there was a runner on third, and um, you know, caught the ball the next pitch. He f switched the potato out very quickly in his glove. He fired the potato toward third base, but intentionally over the third base's head, so it would go into the outfield. And the, the runner naturally broke for home, Dave had the actual ball in his hand, and he tagged him out at the plate. And now this is professional baseball. And, uh, wow. Yeah, the umpire wasn't having it, so he immediately ejected Dave from the game. And there was a little bit of an uproar about the idea of, you know, the integrity of the game and all that. But it really made a lot of headlines around the country. I'm, I was living in Florida at the time, and I remember seeing it in our newspaper. So, you know, over time, people have accepted what happened. And um, the crosscutters actually have Dave in, in their uh, Hall of Fame now. So. Well, it's a reason to bring him back. I want a baked potato bar. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, how is neat? That's really cool. For people that, that love baseball can say things like, I remember that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. it's one of those sports that you can sort of hark back 100 years to what happened before, and it's still relevant today. Everywhere you turn on the first floor of the Madigan Library, you will find artifacts and exhibits at almost every row. This is some of our local history that we've got. And one of the really interesting things about this one, the Junior Baseball American, this is sort of a local baseball league. One of our librarians who works here, her name is Liz Waugh, she did not know this, and she was helping to put this exhibit together. This was really done by Jan and Adam, but Liz was overseeing our 
end of it. This ends up, it's a great grandfather's uniform. Oh my gosh. <laughs> yes. She pulled it out of a box somewhere else other than her home. She didn't even know this comes from the Tabor Museum. They lent it to us. So a lot of the local historical societies, really, this is where they've all contributed. And they've given us. So this came from Tabor, the Tabor Museum right down the road from us. And we, Liz was looking through the pamphlet with her father. And her father said, that's that's your great grandfather. <laughs> so we didn't know that connection was right here in the library. I bet some people could come here and do that exact same thing with several other players or exhibits or pictures. To see some people that they know. And to go along with these local exhibits and artifacts, we have a guide that does tell you, and they're free for everybody to take with them, and that tells you who it came from, who the names are, so they can make those family connections, which is really important. Absolutely. Yeah. It's a band uniform. It's a band uniform. We've got majorette shoes. We've got some drum major things, and this is from the Muncie High School. So again, Do bands play for baseball in the day, or is it just the fact that it's a local band thing? I mean, they put it together. It looks like there's music during a the millionaires during a game. We've always had a band at least one day at the Little League World Series. I think the Repaz Band, our, our local municipal band here, has played at every every Little League World Series that there's ever been. So at, at least one time. Well, that's nice. I wonder if it's any of those guys are still. <laughs> 1947. You know. But they've been playing a long time. So this is our last local case that we have, and this is where we featured the Special Olympics athletes that went to Abu Dhabi. So this is all really new stuff. And, and Aaron, was um, when he was here, he was talking about the hat. He's really anxious to get it back because apparently there was hat trading going on. Okay. At that, uh, so it's not actually his hat, but it's one that he traded with someone to get that. So, what a great memory. Uh, what, a, what a wonderful memory for them. And they have... This is his gold medal, but then you can see the real camaraderie that happened when they were there. The teams really coming together, and they, I don't know if you know this, they launched from the World of Little League Museum. So it's, again, just a community support, and that's what this exhibit's celebrating. I see with the special one who's had some pins of their own <laughs> to do some trading with this. Yeah. So it's just some really terrific artifacts and celebrating athletes and all their accomplishments. Even if they didn't win the gold, we're just here to celebrate and support them. Tracy now transitions us to the part of the hometown team's exhibit that arrived here thanks to the Smithsonian Institute, the Museum on Main Street program. Yeah, this is the only one in Pennsylvania. Uh, they did get to all 50 states. And it's nearing the end of its exhibit, so it's been around for about four years. And it, I think, you know, we're, I know it goes to Salem, Virginia from here, so it's still going around, but it looks great. I mean, it's, it's very really colorful and beautiful. Yeah. We walk over to a setup of real bleachers, just like you'd see in a stadium. This is my favorite. So they ask you, it's really interactive. They want you to take selfies. These are interactive questions. So you would, you know, what is your favorite baseball superstition? And then you lift the seat up, and it tells you uh, lending your bat to another player or a dog walking across the diamond is bad luck. <laughs> well, good luck is not saving during the winning streak. We've all seen that on TV. I was going to say something about socks. There it is. Wearing the same socks all season long. And these are actual bleachers. We want people to come and sit on them. We want them to interact. It's a great place for a selfie, as you can see. Sure. So this is I, this is my favorite part, but there's so many pieces to this exhibit. It's just really fun. Who's the man standing there with the peanuts? No, I have no idea. <laughs> it looks like he should be a very significant part of this. He's obviously he very does. important. Yeah. Roger, Roger Owens. Roger Owens. Thanks, Roger, for all these peanuts. <laughs> cool. It's not a baseball game if you can't yell, Yo, peanuts! <laughs> So this is really about all the different sports and all the different ways that, as you can see, this was Texas Tech, but it's, yep, is the cowbell. I'm interacting. <laughs> and how we as fans get so involved and in rooting for our teams. It's something that brings us together. It's something that brings, you know, it's just an, an equal opportunity supporting event. I mean, when we're all rooting for the same team, any kind of, um, animosities that may be between anybody just sort Gone. of melts away. Absolutely. And sometimes they don't win, but that doesn't mean that we don't love them. We're going to be here next year. Right, exactly. Exhibits, <laughs> <laughs> they do different things. Sometimes they give us some TV. And again, they go from all sports. So you can see there's horseback riding and there's soccer, there's water sports here. There's, there's a lot of non-traditional individual sports that especially kids are involved in nowadays, frisbee, football, and things like that. Who made the choices for this exhibit from the Smithsonian? You know, we worked with Selwyn Ramp and we worked with Terry Cobb, and they're really in charge of the museums on Main Street. Now, from what I know about the exhibit, they really can, of course, the Smithsonian has a deep deep well of artifacts that they can draw from. So they're the ones who coordinate it and they do all the curating for the event. They actually 
team up here and put this together with us. And they've been incredibly supportive, giving us all kinds of materials that we want. So they've got a guide for this, and it's meant to be interactive. It's meant to be lesson planned. So if you have a group, there's campers coming in. And let's take a look at the other side, too, okay. so you can see some of the other interactive things that they have going on. All right. The Hometown Teams exhibit is about those informal teams, those pickup games, street hockey games. It's really about how we incorporate sports into all parts of our lives, and then it becomes part of our culture. It sure does. I mean, who doesn't know Wheaties boxes and sports, is on, you know, sports yeah. athletes on Wheaties boxes? And I love that they have those in this exhibit for you to see. I think that that really just makes us, at any age, feel connected to this. Exhibit. We're connected. Yeah. We actually got a, a call from the Smithsonian back as early as 2012, I think, when they were talking about developing this exhibit, and they had asked us to supply them some ideas from Little League. And there is a, a Little League historical part of this exhibit. It has to do with the first girl to play Little League and the girls who sued Little League in the early 1970s in order to play with the backing from the National Organization for Women. So it's really neat that they have the, what's going on in, in sports now, but also some of the history of it as well. And her, her case was the one that really forced Little League to accept girls. Baseball's come a long way, and it's obvious with the technology that's available, patrons can use an app on the phone to interact with the hometown team's exhibit. There's also an app that goes along with this. You can, with your phone, click on a, you know, just put out, and it will give you an app. And then throughout the exhibit, it will give you different places to do things with the exhibit from the app. So that's kind of a very 21st century feature of an exhibit. Lance and the team at the World of Little League Museum all getting ready for the big event coming up in August. Yeah, we're all, we're all set for, you know, 300, 400,000 friends to come in and, and uh, watch the World Series. How long have you been the executive director of the World of Little League Museum? Uh, since 2013, when we reopened, I was um, in the media relations department before then at, at Little League and was assistant regional director down in St. Petersburg, Florida before that. So when you came in here, did you have big shoes to fill? I did. Yeah, the museum, like I said, had opened in 1982 and it had gone through a lot, but the Little League's board of directors wanted to, to redo the whole place and put some money into it and do it right. So, um, you know, to their credit, and they've kept it up since then because a, a museum takes upkeep, things break, and, you, and you know, technology catches up or exceeds what you've got in there and you have to be able to replace it. So we, we actually have several new exhibits going in this year for this year's World Series. What is the address of the World um, Little League Museum? It's at 525 U.S. Highway 15 which on some devices is also known as Montgomery Pike. And uh, what are your hours that you can go and see some of the things that are at the World Little League Museum? Our museum is open 9 to 5 every day, Monday through Sunday. And Tracy, anytime students and the public can come to the Madigan Library and see this. Yes, so we're, uh, as long as we're open, they can come and see it. We're open seven days a week, uh, at least through the exhibit. We're open on Sundays and Saturdays. We're only open from noon to 5, but every other day we're open from 7.30 till 9 o'clock, so uh, Fridays till 5, they can come in and see it. But yeah, it, it, we're, we'd welcome people to come and see this wonderful exhibit and then head over to the World of Little League Museum. <laughs> 300,000, did you say, are coming to town? Yeah, that's, that's the minimum attendance for the, for the all 32 games that are played. And of course, all 32 games are on national television, too, so if you can't make it here, you can always watch on TV. What are some of the special events that go on around the Little League World Series as far as things happening in town besides the Madigan Library Home Teams exhibit? Sure. Um, well, I mentioned the uh, Williamsport Welcomes the World is on Friday, the open Friday during the World Series, and the Grand Slam Parade takes place the night before the World Series starts, so it's on Wednesday the 14th. And that's downtown here in Williamsport, and, and that in itself is just grown to be amazing. I think there's like 100 and 12 units in that in that parade. All the players of the World Series, the umpires, they'll all be in it. You can see bands and fire trucks and the usual things. But um, I think they get over 10,000 people every year lining that route to, to watch that parade. So it's a lot of fun for everybody. Any kids that we should be looking out for? For the first time, there's a Cuban team in it. Uh, Little League uh, worked very hard over the last several years with our State Department and with the Cuban government in working out the details to bring in more than 100 different programs in Cuba to the Little League program, and this will be the first time that they'll be participating in the regional tournament. They're, and this is know, because of the changes in the government uh, structures as far as our relations with Cuba. Yeah, it's, it's been a long time coming, but there's the fact that there's, you know, thousands of kids in Cuba that are now playing Little League and getting to, you know, be a part of a, a worldwide organization I think is a great thing. Well, it's wonderful to be here, and thanks for the tour and the lovely things, Tracy. It's a great place. Thank you for coming. We really encourage everybody to come on down, and we look forward to seeing them here. Thanks so much, Lance Van Aken of the World of Little League World Series, and Tracy Amy at the Madigan Library. Welcome to everybody. <laughs>
You have until September 8th to experience Hometown Teams, a museum on Main Street at the Madigan Library on the campus of Penn College. In Touch is locally produced in our studios at 1685 Four Mile Drive in Williamsport. To get in touch with us regarding questions, comments, or topic ideas, call weekdays between 8 and 5, 570-323-8200. You can also write to me at 1685 Four Mile Drive, Williamsport, PA, 17701, attention Freddie Hammer, or email me at fhammer at backyardbroadcasting.com. Thanks for listening to In Touch, a production of Backyard Broadcasting.